Fuck off, Brian. I can't help it. Uh, Matt was cool. We hadn't hung out with Damien or Hugo. We tried Robert and he was an asshole, so we're just gonna... I mean, why not? It's been a while. For me, anyway. That's a nice slowly holy shit. What happened? There we go. I navigate to Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue, wanna hang out? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. Wah. Uh oh. Think about it for a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for and they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, how was middle school for you? bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being genuinely terrible. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old buildings for 40 hours a week during long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day, top 40s pop. Thanks, Amanda. be avoided at all costs. Yeah, middle school kind of sucks. Like, you don't want to teach middle school if you can get away from it. Didn't like it. I had my first crush in middle school and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Stucks. Stugs. You hurt me and I'll never forget. What'd she do to you? Heh <laughs> I remember the bit of betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham, him making me eat dirt in front of her. I don't want to talk about it. See, middle schoolers are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium and just wanted to know what I was in for. Get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? What the fuck? <laughs> Last field trip I got to go on was the clam chowder factory. They didn't give us clam chowder. They give us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? No, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up into one of the vats of clam chowder and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Let's leave that story firmly in the past. You should do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could use the help, plus you get to hang out with cool fish. I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. Yes. Yes, this. I am worried that a whale is going to pop out of the touch tank and swallow me whole. Don't you put fear in my heart. Do they have penguins? Yes, they have penguins. Yeah. Then it's settled. <laughs> penguins outweigh fear of the ocean. Tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I arrive at the aquarium to find the school buses who beat me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. You middle school. 
Hugo jogs up to me looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! It's been a debacle. We're short-handed and most of the kids won't stop screaming. I live for Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. It's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. Only 10? They're over here. <laughs> They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look at the moment <laughs> of a moment to stare at Hugo. They then go back to texting. Is that quiet? Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school. <laughs> we'll see. Classes start filing into the aquarium, and Hugo hands out massive staple packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, though this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. <laughs> to be fair, Hugo, you're being a bit of a dick. <laughs> like, what's in the packet? Just busy work so that the teachers can have a moment's reprieve. I think one of the question asked them to sit quietly for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like that. I'm keeping this in mind. Busy work. I thought you were an English teacher. What does aquarium have to do with books? Rich did a unit on the old man and the sea. Why is it always the old man and the sea? Nothing quite like introducing kids to the future of per per the perseverance of the human spirit than making them pet stingrays. Gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with ruddy colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. I know, it's a lionfish. I did not know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size. Helpful. Well, yeah, yeah, everyone knows that. Lionfish are super venomous. Don't let them touch you. Take a look at this one over here. Spiny, grumpy looking fish. Stonefish. Most venomous fish in the world. They just like keep it here? Oh, they're, they're relatively harmless as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Tissue necrosis. Cool. <laughs> Nature is wild. Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, you see that fish over there? That one? Yeah, that's the... Blue Nose Wiggly Fish. American Longfin. Humphead Wrasse. Yeah? Did you know that? Paranormal fish trivia, psychiatric fish trivia, political fish trivia, paranormal. This fish sleeps upside down, but contrary to popular belief, it is not an actual vampire. That's the vampire fish. Wait, are you serious? Absolutely not. I'm playing it for the gag here. Ha! <laughs> Good one. We lead the kids to another room. Oh shit. Ignore that. <laughs> Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in a massive floor to ceiling aquarium. The kids begin to take selfies with the sharks. Shelfies? They started fighting over Capri Sun. I walk around the room reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish. After a while, I look around and see Hugo. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. <laughs> I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd rather stare at you. I can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. Are those two sharks kissing? Do this one. A 
a great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It truly is fascinating to be able to observe it in a setting such as this. That's a very astute point, Captain. <laughs> Stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank. Seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. <laughs> to be fair, why would you want to touch a fish? They don't really feel nice, and it probably stresses the fish out. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moisturized hands. Hugo rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, Captain? No. That's deeper wind died. I think I'm good, I don't really... I think I should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun. And informative. Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of these things are, but I get the feeling they will probably bite me in my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed. That's what they tell you. Horseshoe crabs are gross, and they have too many legs. They look like this. They can live forever, and they can't get... They're very hard to get illness, and they live for thousands of years. <laughs> and an enemy is perfectly safe to touch. Guess my better judgment, I approach a tank. Then I'm murdered. Slowly, I touch a stingray. See, not so bad. It feels like fun, slimy leather. <laughs> Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? Unless they're whales, in which case you just become more and more terrified of them. Oh, and Venom. Like, just as in the concept of Venom. That's horrible. The more you study that, the more you realize how fucking insane nature is. Like, hey, we'll all synthesize our own Venoms. All of them fatal in horrific ways. All different types of venom, slightly different, all fatal, great, <laughs> well, or just horrible. Dive my hand back into the touch tank with renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away blushing, Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I got, just got a little carried away some. Wait, that girl over there looks suspicious. Why's that? A oh, backpack's usually that wet. Hold on. She's stealing fish. Susan, get back here. <laughs> Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks. Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Want me to punch you in the fucking face, Susan? None of the girls, aside from, like, our daughters, are animated or drawn. <laughs> Think you might need a bad cop. The kid. <laughs> I'm not afraid to hit a child. We don't have time for games here. That's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink. Whatever it is, it goes back in the touch tank now. You're not a teacher, you can't tell me what to do. Yes, well I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time we won't see, please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping a butt bag on the floor lands with a wet slap. I stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Hugo Lee, <laughs> he's so disturbed. A horseshoe crab gets out and across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up and places it back in the tank. Gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where outside where he was gonna die? So you can go back to your group, we'll discuss this later. Hands where we can see them, bitch. Susan sulks off. Leave me alone with Hugo. This is like this is what I'm talking about with idiots and like tanks where you can manipulate things with your hands. You always feel that there's gonna be one idiot that's just like, I'm gonna steal a penguin. 
Oh, it's died. <laughs> so stressing out the poor rays and the fish because there's assholes around, you know? In the next room we see a variety of smaller tanks, sea urchins, tiny fish, rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life. Look over the here. Hugo points to some seahorses. Points so some he seahorses. Gathered at the bottom of a tank. One of them in the middle is giving birth. Oh, everyone knows that. Male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur, they just jump back on their phones. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we had it hard. I wonder if they have to deal with their teenage years. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if we stop learning, I think you doubt. I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. <laughs> we'll get there. Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. Yeah! <laughs> A group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure trying to get their attention. Asshole kids. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. <laughs> Is it one of ours? Oh, great. Another dumb bitch. <laughs> Sorry, that was really mean. Why is it like there's like all these misbehaving students and we've caught two girls? What are the boys doing? Are they just stealthier? Maybe watching them too. Just hiding outside of one of the employees. Over on the study enclosure, I see the dogs exhibit a job. Was it unlocked the whole time? We've got to stop her before the staff sees and bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards a puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Everybody fucks. <laughs> I have an announcement. The whole room <laughs> turns towards Hugo. Um, here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody's confused from Hugo. What are you doing, kitty? You're knocking things down. Mm. This is my shot. I could run into the enclosure and I'm greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey. Go once around to look at me. I know this pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrary to popular beef, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusing when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. What are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go? They're gonna live in my closet. Oh, you fucking bitch. <laughs> like, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We've got to get out of here. I'm gonna make them vegan. Fuck off. <laughs> like, still a little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates, uh, with some exceptions, so they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. <clears throat> Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is losing interest. I'm running out of time. Lay down the law! Parenting faux pas, who gives a shit? Money, give me money. I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket, pull out everything I have, examining each bill. I have $12. <laughs> Here's a button, is that enough? We have to shake on our arrangement. 
But I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We have to block the birds. Bird block. Bird block, block that bird. No. Bad bird. Bad bird. Bad bird. <laughs> Why doesn't it go weird? No, bad bird. No! Nobody, no. No, 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 no. What the fuck is this game even? No! No! He's getting out, penguin! They're, they're going through the door! I thought the door was solid. There's no collision. No, no, no! No, no penguins! No! There's so many! Why are they... They're just walking past the wall like it's nothing. Bribe that team. Bribe the penguin. Fucking no. So many penguins got out. Holy shit. 13 penguins escaped. Bribery works. <laughs> <clears throat> Do what you love, and you will come. He wrapped up the penguin speech. A few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots off from across the way and runs over. Molly, what were you doing in there? Liberating animals, Mr. Vega. Realize that penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well, um, it was the fault that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. It turns to be Euro me dollars. What? <laughs> Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Not off the hook, Molly. You just brave a child. Hey, I tried to lay down the law first and then they forced me into the bribe option. I don't run the game here. You can't play by the rules. Of... We've all done dark things in our lives. I'm not the young bright-eyed youth I used to be. That person believed in a world where you wouldn't have to bribe children to save a penguin. The me today knows different. I only wish I could go back. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. <laughs> day finally to a close. The whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back to the school buses. Kids load onto the buses. Hugo pulls me aside. Hey, Captain, thank you so much for helping out. You're a lifesaver. No problemo, neighborino. It was kind of bueno. Let me take you out and make it up to you. You like cheese boards? I'm actually lactose intolerant. I love cheese boards. <laughs> I'm all about cheese boards. There is nothing on earth more satisfying than a good cheese board. <laughs> like I have a choice. Let's make sure these kids don't keep stealing. Oh, because I'd find a house empty. Hmm. I wonder where the panda's at. Amanda pops in through the front door. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was aquarium? It was adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. Got to go into the penguin enclosure. Did you steal a penguin? No penguins are stolen thanks to my efforts and Mr. Vegas. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo though. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a, kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud. He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. All right, too much adventure. I'm gonna go rest my face. I mean, take a nap. There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. <laughs> Mustache, tape sports. Yeah, S rank that Hugo. There's only two that I managed to like. 
Ooh, Craig, hello. So I have a favor to ask. Robert invited me over for dinner. Oh, Robert. I know it's kind of a faux pas to invite another bro, but I've known the guy for years and I still can't get a good read on him and I know it's going to be super awkward if I go by myself. Would you please come with me? Egg, egg, egg pan. Water. What the hell? I love food. I especially love food that's free. I don't know why they're so sweaty over cooking, but sure. I'm really not down. No! I hope that's a sweat of relief. No, that's the guy I slept with. <laughs> Like on the first day. Don't know how you feel about social time with Robert. Free food is free food. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Captain Boy, am I glad to see you? This is gonna be so awkward. No! <laughs> Spugging apple cider. Robert literally has a wine cellar. Wow. At least I think he... I'm generally unsure if he was telling the truth. I can never tell with him. Thank God it's not just me. I never know. He's so deadpan. I usually just laugh it off, but man, that guy's an enigma. We start walking over to Robert's house. Does Robert even know how to cook? I have sincere doubts about whether he even knows how to shave or iron his shirts. I feel like you learn to cook after you learn those two first. One time I saw him grab a hot dog from a trash can. For me it was at the very top of the trash can, like sitting above it, but still, if we, he were on trial, I think the jury would define that as in the trash. In his defense, I've definitely considered grabbing food from top of the trash before. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe he's the enlightened one, maybe we're holding ourselves back. We arrive at Robert's house and ring the doorbell, but the doorbell doesn't chime. Must be broken. Craig knocks. When does Robert have a dog? I don't know, that's weird. I can hear Robert just inside. One second! Uncharted territory, Captain. What if he's the one making barking noises and there is no dog? It's, uh, we're not even inside yet. Finally, the door opens. Robert looks pretty sun to see me and quickly adjusts his posture to try and hide it. This is going to be weird, isn't it? Didn't know you'd be tagging along. Craig, not tell Robert I was coming. Come on, Craig. Sweat going down Craig's face. I can leave if there's... No. It will just be a freeway. Wipe your feet. <laughs> like... We enter Robert's living room, which is a lot more inviting than I remember it being. Make yourselves at home. We can still hear balking in the other room. I don't know you had a dog, Bobbit. Oh yeah, that's Betsy. You have to put her up when guests are over, so you'll come down in a bit. What kind of dog is she? Pit bull. Yeah. Rescued her. She hates strangers. If I let her out right now, I'll probably have to take you both to the ER. Craig and I think I can't tell you which is an eyebrow at me. Okay. Killer dog. Awesome. I gotta go finish dinner made also buco. Also buco. Also buco. Also buco. Us. <laughs> I don't know. Robert leaves the room. I guess to the kitchen, Craig leads in and whispers, what was the dog fighting real or was he kidding? Oh no! What's also Boko? Oh no! Do you make up that word? Until I have also... also Boko in front of me, I, we can only assume so. We sit in silence, taking in Robert's trashy living room. Are we about to get sword? <laughs> nah, usually you wake up in those situations. We voluntarily walked into this one, although he did look pretty shocked to see you, maybe you being there for off his plans. His murder plans. This is so weird. 
three paper plates. Robert finally walks into his room carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I have a dining table, don't trust them. <laughs> oh, he's so weird, so we're eating here. I also don't have real paper people plates. Even I have real people plates. Oh. oh. Robert sets plate in front of us on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. It looks like meat, sauce, some vegetables. No meow. <laughs> I think that might be rice, but it could also be pasta. I guess there's only one way to find out. I take a bite. Oh my god. I take another bite. It's amazing. The risotto is creamy. Robert, this is incredible. You cook this. It's a pregnant pause as Robert formulates a response like it's weird to get a compliment from me. <coughs> I fished it out of a dumpster behind a restaurant, or at least I think it was a restaurant. Do you believe people just throw this stuff away? <laughs> I almost gag. Oh, I look over at Craig, who looks wary, but still has a mouthful. He gives Robert a thumbs up. Glad you like it. Where did you learn how to cook like this? Went to a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Everything he says, he can't read this guy. <laughs> Is he messing with us? I decided to play along. You live in Spain? What? <laughs> Backpacking through Europe after you dropped out of college. Broke, worked a couple of odd jobs wherever I could screw to give it cash. I'm eating at this little restaurant, I go to pay, I've got no money, I'm in the middle of ditching when the manager catches me and puts me to work in the kitchen. Long story short, they ended up liking me so much they offered me a job. Why not? Started living with some distant relatives on my mom's side. Over the course of two years, I worked my way up from busboy to sous chef, learned a lot. Craig and I wait for the punchline, what night watchman did he swindle to get back to the States? Who did he call in a back of in a game of poker in the back room of a speakeasy for safe passage in the crew quarters of a cargo ship? <coughs> I still love to cook. I don't know what's real. This food's so good I kinda don't care. Plus Robert is actually talking to me like we're two people in the same room, which I guess is nice. That's amazing. It really is, to be totally honest, I wasn't expecting gourmet cooking here. Especially not served on paper plates. I don't care about presentation. If the food is good, it should speak for itself. It's also Boko. I can't say it. Screaming for itself. Paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you double them up. <laughs> hey, is it bad if I ask for seconds? No problemo. The save room for dessert, I made lemon berry savarin. Fuck. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Aren't you just full of... Craig looks over at me. Surprises. Robert winks. You bet I am. You can come over for dinner anytime. Everyone hits on Craig. Craig? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go get... <laughs> me too. He seems nice. <laughs> I had a food coma. Thanks for coming. I'm making it an attempt to be more social. So he tells me he's not gonna follow through on that. Man, if you'll have me, I'm here. Especially if there's also Boko involved. That was so weird. That was so weird! <laughs> oh, what the hell? Okay. I'm gonna pause it there, get a drink, start up again in a minute. Savvy.